Hey guys, welcome back. Today we're talking about artificial light and how we can make it look like natural light. Now it doesn't matter whether you're using a speed light or a studio strobe, this is an Alien B B800, or constant light, it doesn't matter. We're gonna look at the principles of lighting and how we can modify it and control it to look like daylight. Let's get into it. Well, we've got our little setup here, and as you can see, I've got a very simple subject. That way it makes it very easy to see the lighting and the lighting effects that we're gonna do, and makes it easier for me to explain to you. So I've just simply have these pairs here. We're talking artificial light and how we can make it look natural. The funny thing is, these are artificial pairs, and we're talking about artificial light to try and look natural. All right, the first thing, you need to understand light. You need to go out and you need to look at lighting conditions in the natural world. On a sunny day, what do the shadows look like? Go under the shade of a tree, what's the light look like? Go out and look at natural light and how it acts on certain subjects. It'll start giving you a better eye for when you're in the studio and you're trying to reproduce the lighting because it would be very hard for you to say, paint a picture of a cat if you've never seen a cat. Well, it'd be very hard for you to create natural light if you've never actually really looked at natural light. So get out, look at natural light and how it acts at different times of the day, early morning versus that golden hour versus a 12 lunchtime, overcast day. Look at the shadows, look at the highlights, look at the specular lighting, look at all that stuff and get a good understanding of lighting. Now in here, I'm not gonna get into the inverse square law of light and all the principles of it. We're gonna do some basic general overview of lighting so you get an understanding of some practical experience that you can do to achieve a more natural look to your lighting. All right? First thing we're gonna talk about though is the size of your light. Now, I don't need a very big light for food photography or to light a pair. But if I was trying to light a car, I would need a bigger light. Now, if I have a small light and I try and light, say, the pair, and it's a very small light, it'll create a hard light with a dark shadow and it won't be very pleasing, like this image here. So you can see the lighting is not very good. The uh, lighting is very contrasty and the shadow is basically black. Not very good whatsoever. Now, in order to change that, we need to modify the light or diffuse it. All right, so that brings our second point, and that is diffusing or modifying the light. I will put a link in the description down below on a video that I've done on setting up a home studio, and I show a lot of the modifiers that I have more in depth. I'm basically just gonna be mentioning them in here, but we need to modify or diffuse that small light source. So if we take, say, a speed light, and we shoot it through a diffuser panel of 40, 50 inches, that speed light, the size of it, has gone from the speed light to now that 40 inch panel. Your light source is a 40 inch panel now, not a speed light. Because the light's hitting the panel, the whole panel's lighting up and spreading the light out evenly across the scene. So when I do a hard light, like in this image, you can see, again, it's the same image, it's very contrasty. Look what happens when I put that diffuser panel in. Big difference, I've evened the lighting out and I soften the shadows right out. And that's what we're talking about. That's just one way of doing it. Now, there is things like soft boxes, octa boxes, umbrellas, and all that wonderful stuff to help modify and diffuse lighting. Now, some of the soft boxes, octa boxes, have an inner baffle. They have a second layer of diffusion. Like in this example here, you can see the, the front diffusion panel is just held on by Velcro. You pull the Velcro back, and there's an inner layer called a baffle. The light hits that baffle, which spreads across the front of it, and then it then spreads to the front panel, which then gives you that big, soft, even lighting across the front and creates a little more wraparound light than just having the one layer. Be aware, though, when you have two layers, you're going to lose a bit of exposure, so you're going to have to compensate out for that. All right, so that is talking about diffusing and modifying with some of the equipment and Here's an example with them without the diffusing panel in there, and you can see the difference. So let's have a little closer look in on that so you see what I'm talking about. All right, there's our subject with just direct hard light on it with no diffusion. Look what happens when I slide the diffusing panel in. 
Look how soft the shadows have become and the light is more even. So that's with the diffuser, that's without. That's with the diffuser. That's the kind of light that I like. Now you know exactly what I mean. Now, our first point was the size of the light. The second one was diffusing or modifying it. And the third key point, and a lot of people struggle with this, is the distance the light is to the subject. The closer the distance your light is to the sort, to the subject, the shorter the shadow, as in this example here. You can see that the shadow is very short. Now, when I pull that lighting away, I get a longer shadow, like in this example. Now, if I'm putting that light through a diffuser panel and the diffuser panel is close to my subject, then I will have a short shadow with nice even lighting. If I move, say, the speed light or the studio light closer to the diffuser panel, well, what happens when you bring that lighting closer? You're bringing a hard light source in closer. It creates a bit more contrast. You still have that short shadowing because your main light is in closer, but you increase contrast. When you pull your light away, you're going to lengthen that shadow a bit more, and you're going to get a bit more of even lighting, but you're also going to have a decrease in exposure because of that. So have to be aware of that. And let's get a, a little deeper look at this and show it in action of moving the light in and out so you can see how the shadow changes and then how it works with the diffusion in and out. So let's have a closer look at that. You can see I've got a diffusion panel set very close to the table near the subject, the pairs. Now, I have the studio light set very close. Let's turn it on. And if you look at the front of the diffusion panel, you can see I have a small hot spot because the light is so close. Now, when you look at the front pair, you can see the shadowing on it. But I also have a softer shadow because it's now diffused. I have a shorter shadow because the light is in closer but I still have a bit of a contrast to that. So if I pull this studio light back, I get a more even light across the front of that panel. And if you notice, the real hot spot's kind of gone now. And I look at the shadows. They're there, they're longer, and they're very soft. They're not a whole lot longer, but they are a bit longer, but the softness the evenness of the lighting across the scene versus when I pull in. You can see the difference it makes by moving this light in and out from your subject. Being aware, you're going to lose light the further you are away from it. Now, if I simply remove this reflector, or this diffuser, I should say, you will see the difference, and I've done nothing but move, the diffuser, so close, far away, close, far away. Look at the quality of light difference. So if I have that there, I have a contrast to your light than if I put this in here. I get a much better, more pleasing light. So that's the difference between having a diffuser panel in, no diffuser panel. Diffuser, no diffuser. I definitely like the diffuser panel. I get that soft, beautiful lighting. And there's no reflector on the other side. I do have the big octobox over there, which will bounce a little bit back in, but not enough to really matter. So there we go. You can see moving that light in and out from the diffusion panel makes a big difference to the lighting. Now, if you're using a soft box, umbrella, and things like that, you don't have to worry about the distance the light is from the front diffusing panels or the baffles because they have already engineered it that way. You don't have to think about it. They've already taken care of that for you. But that's the basics of uh, trying to get artificial lighting to look more natural within a studio. There is uh, another way you can increase and add a little more interest into it, and that's by using gobos. Gobo is basically an object you put between the light and your subject to create some interesting shadows and highlights. I'm going to create a separate video on that, so you look forward to that one. We won't get into it now. And you can create some very cool sunlight effects with it. But that's it for this one. You need to take these three items, the size of your light, the diffusion of the light, and the distance your light is from the subject, and play with those three. Play with one of them. Play with all three to create the lighting look that you're going for, and you'll be able to replicate and create some very 
interesting looking images that have a natural light feel to them. All right, if you're new to the channel, please subscribe. Hit that bell notification so you're aware when I post new videos. If you enjoyed this, please give it a thumbs up. So, until the next time.